Hey guys, this is Robin with Robin's Crocheted Creations and Spin Crochet Repeat RCC. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Ravelry, Etsy, YouTube, and Rumble. I have been asked to show how to do a um, how to crochet a dishcloth. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I had mentioned in the tutorial for single crochet stitch that you can find a lot of supplies at your local Dollar Tree and I wanted to demonstrate um, today's dishcloth with some supplies that came from the Dollar Tree. They have in recent years begun offering a lot of uh, great craft material so if you are interested in learning to crochet or to knit because I did notice they have knitting needles too um, knitting is not really my thing, uh, but if it's yours, then I say go for it. Um, they have some knitting needles and crochet needles and some cotton yarn. They also have a uh, kitchen twine that probably could be used. I haven't really tried it, but um, probably could be used in place of yarn. And things like this are great if you want to just get a... A little taste of what a craft entails to um, just give it a try before you really commit a lot financially and so today we're going to be using this just cotton yarn and this six millimeter crochet hook that came from the Dollar Tree a word of caution when making pot holders you want to make sure you have 100% cotton. This, although it is called just cotton, is 85% cotton and 15% polyester. And you'll notice it has an X over the iron on the care label. This means it is unsafe to use as a pot holder. Great for dishcloths, great for other things, as long as they are not going to be subjected to direct heat such as a hot pan um, or anything that might require ironing so keep this in mind if you want 100 percent cotton i know walmart has a couple brands that they carry um, also joann's hobby lobby uh, you can look on amazon of course all the typical places that um, that carry uh, art supplies, Michaels, um, places like that, anywhere that you might have a local yarn store, make sure you read the label and make sure that it is 100% cotton before you uh, commit these to being pot holders because the direct heat can melt the acrylic. The acrylic can then melt to you, which would be very painful. So we're going to find the end of our yarn and we're going to get started. This is a worsted weight yarn, a yarn weight of four. I will do another video illustrating the differences in yarn weights and how they and the needle size affect uh, the size of your finished product because this, these are details that are important. They're not just thrown on the label for something to read. They are there for a reason it's because we need to know what we're doing with it and how to handle it so to start a dishcloth I'm first going to show you how to do a double crochet stitch because this is what we will be using you can also do them with single crochet you can do them with half double crochet um, I prefer double crochet for a lot of these simply because it does, it's a taller stitch than the single crochet. It's double the height, kind of hence the name. Um, and also because of just the way the stitch has worked. Um, it, it works up a little bit quicker and um, it, I just prefer it. So, um, half double crochets are also good. They're going to be a little bit thicker. And I'll have videos on soon on how to do uh, half double crochet, how to do double crochet stitch. And uh, those will be separate from this. 
So to get started, we're going to make our chain. We're going to, I'm going to say, we'll try 20 and see about how wide it is. So that's one, you just yarn over and pull through the loop. That's two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to pull out some more yarn, and I kind of sound like an episode of Sesame Street with my counting. Although, they get much more excited than I do. So we were at ten. And we'll go 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now, because we're going to do double crochet, I'm going to add, let's see, first let's look. Yeah, 20 is going to be mm, maybe about 5 inches wide, so that seems like a good a good width uh, you can make them as big as you want you could even make a dish um, uh, like a, a hand towel out of this um, but because we're going to double crochet I'm going to add two for a turning chain and then we're going to work into the third loop from the hook so one two and three we're going to yarn over we're going to push through and get closer we're going to there it goes push through the top of this chain yarn over pull through to pull up a loop yarn over pull through two sorry the focus is crazy yarn over pull through two you have just made a double crochet stitch. I'll show it again. We yarn over, we work into the next chain. Now you'll want to watch and make sure you're not working back into the same chain. So you can see these two little loops where we marked where we worked into this chain. We want to make sure that we go into the next one. And then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, and we're going to continue that across. And we will end up with 20 double crochets once we get to the end. Let me show you what it looks like so far. We have one, two, three, and four double crochets. And it will, at first, try to roll up on itself a bit. That's okay as uh, you continue to work and build on this. It will, uh, it will flatten out. While I'm working to the end of this chain, I'll talk to you about one way to fix that curl is blocking. Um, there are different ways of doing this. I have done it different ways. Sometimes it was just a um, work with what I had kind of thing. And uh, so, you know, that I, I'm a big believer in that. And when you can work with what you have. And make the most of what you have. I think that's always a great idea. Rather than continuing to uh, just pile on more and more of an investment. Until you decide that this is something that you want to continue doing. So one way that I have blocked before is to um, wet the final product. And then um, I put down a dishcloth. Put the crocheted item on that uh, on that or an, on a towel depending on the size of it 
um, and either folding the towel on top of it or putting another one on top and then uh, put a book on it or something heavy, something to weight it down to press it, especially if it is something that cannot be ironed, such as this yarn, because it is 15% polyester. Um, another way, a more common way, is to pin it. Again, you can use a, uh, a cushion, something that you don't mind getting wet. You can use a cushion, a, um, a piece of styrofoam, um, something that is sturdy. And you wet the item and you lay it flat and you pin it down. And that's, and you wait till it dry. And that is the most uh, common way that you will see of someone blocking, I believe. Um, it, it helps things to, um, the stitches to just kind of settle in, especially if you're going for a more finished size, um, a, a more particular finished size, I should say. Um, when you wet something, these stitches are going to tend to close up on one another and kind of scrunch in. And if you need it to be stretched out a bit, then the blocking can help with that. So here we are. We have done our 20 double crochets across our chain. Now, where we go from here is we are going to chain two. We are going to turn our work, yarn over, double crochet here in this first, the top of the double crochet from the last row. Again, yarn over. I'm going to show you real quick this view from the top. We've got this V, and it looks like, as you look across it, our beginning chain. And so, when we made our first row of double crochet, we worked through just one loop. And you can do that with this. Um, it will make a, uh, it's what's called a back loop double crochet to work back here, or front loop double crochet to work through this loop. But for the, I'll, I'll illustrate that a little bit more in the video for um, the double crochet for this, we just want a basic dishcloth. We're going to work through both of them. See, they're both on the hook. We're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And so we will continue this across, and you'll be able to see kind of what it looks like. when it comes to working a stitch into another stitch and just the structure of crochet and how it is um, it's almost like building blocks where you have to have a solid foundation and that's our chain you have to have that um, correct you have to have that um, sturdy you want your stitches to be even and not one tiny and then the next one huge. You want a solid foundation to build upon so that your uh, your final product is as it should be. And you want to make sure of the same as you continue to build on this. That you are making good even stitches. Um, if you'll notice I have... Uh, have the yarn held in the crook of this finger. This is helping me to control the tension. Different people crochet with a different tension. And uh, sometimes, to give my hands a break, I will loop it around my fingers like this. And, uh, and that also helps me to control the tension.
with different things, your tension will need to be either looser or tighter. If it's uh, if you're crocheting toys, you're going to need your tension to be a little stiffer so that the stitches hold more tightly together and your stuffing doesn't escape. If it's something uh, that needs to be softer, you might need to relax your hand just a little bit more. See, I'm not quite, I don't have my finger quite as rigid. Relaxed it a little bit, so it's it's making the yarn a little more, um, less tense, I guess you'd say. Um, then, if I hold it straight, I don't have as much room to move it as when I relax. So controlling your tension is something that comes with practice. It comes with time. And making simple things like these dishcloths is, um, is a really good way to practice that tension. It's pretty difficult to mess up crocheting a square like this. Um, so... This is a good way to get in a lot of practice and still end up with something that is usable so that you don't feel like you wasted your time. So here we've got our second row. And as you can see, just like we worked, let me zoom in. Just like we worked into our chain, you see these two loops from our double crochet that went into the chain. Here we have two loops that have worked into the tops of these double crochets where it looked like our chain. So, um, a lot of it is repetitive and just takes time to really look at what you're doing. And you will learn so much if you just watch your details. Don't get too hung up on them on something like this. Again, because... If I wanted to, I could stop here and use this to wash dishes. Now, it's probably not going to be the best idea. Um, and it's not going to cover as much area. But it is totally usable. Um, if I were to just... If I, I could change up stitches and do a few rows of single crochet, do a few rows of double or triple or half double, whatever you call it, whatever stitch you want, um, I could do those and it would still come out totally usable. So if you are interested in learning to crochet, dishcloths are an excellent place to start because it allows you, like I said before, to get a lot of practice in and still get something usable. And even if you decide it's not for you, you can still keep that dishcloth and say, hey, I made that. So again, at the end of the row, let me zoom back out. We're going to chain two, turn our work, yarn over, push through both loops in the top of the double crochet from the last row, and yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we will just can, whoops. This is another thing about uh, crocheting is sometimes your hook will just slip right out of there, and that's okay. Um, this is one reason why I learn to hold on to my work as I do it, because then I don't have to worry about things unraveling. Um, some other people might not be as prone to that as I am, and that's okay, so they might can... Hold their work over here and um, and not keep such a, a good a grip on it I guess you'd say but I I just like to make sure because I don't like to pull stitches out and start over so that is why you'll see my left hand move up to hold the stitches as I work them
and this also helps control the tension of your stitches so to make your dishcloth you'll continue to work rows of double crochet or whatever stitch you have going on until you have the desired size again if you want to make this bigger you can make a longer chain add two for the turning chain and then work into the third uh, loop from the hook to begin your double crochets when you finish you're going to either use your crochet hook or a tapestry needle to weave these ends in do not cut this because it will begin to unravel um, and then you will have a, a small tail when you get to the end of your dishcloth and um, you'll need to weave that in as well so here is my start to this I'm going to work on it a little bit more and I'll jump back on when I have something closer to a finished product product when you try to say product and project at the same time it gets a little muddy so be back in just a few all right so here we are with uh, our finished dish cloth I went a total of 12 rows and liked the size that it was so I'm going to finish it off here another thing that you might consider is uh, doubling this just continuing to increase in your rows and then folding it in half you can whip stitch it around and um, have it be a, at a double thickness um, so that's an option but I'm going to cut the yarn leaving a tail like I mentioned before and to um, my camera sliding around so to finish off we're going to have our uh, crochet hook in the final loop. I'm going to yarn over and pull the tail all the way through. Uh, firmly tug on that and push that loop down. And if you like, you can always um, make another little knot on top of that. And then we will need, I forgot to grab my tapestry needle. We will need to sew in our ends and this can be done with a crochet hook if you don't have a tapestry needle it gives um, a little bit of a easier time using a tapestry needle and what you will do is just feed it through as though you were sewing um, I like to just kind of grab random stitches that are going in different directions because it's going to hold that tail a little bit better um, in my opinion than just going down the row and then I double back on where I sewed and need sharper scissors I snip that end um, for a really short tail like we have here I go ahead and put my needle through the stitches that I want to sew through and then feed my yarn through the eye of the needle and pull it on through and then I uh, go ahead and let the yarn come on out so that I can double back and grab a few a little this way a few other stitches and I put the yarn back into the eye of the needle Some of it went through and some of it didn't. 
so it's short enough here's what we'll do we'll just go ahead and trim trim that there and call it done there is a finished dishcloth thanks for watching